And all of this will, of course, be a build up, inshallah ta'ala, to once we get back to uh, our full episodes, bidnillahi ta'ala, and we will go to the life of Aisha, radiallahu ta'ala anha, our mother Aisha, in detail, bidnillahi ta'ala. Now, the biographies that have been chosen for the next five episodes, inshallah ta'ala, there is a connection uh, between them. They often feed into uh, the next story. But there's one particular question that as we covered the Qurra, the reciters around the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that came up a few times, particularly from the sisters. Were there any female hafidhat? Were there any women that memorized the Qur'an alongside those luminaries that we mentioned that preserved the Qur'an? And to preface that answer, you have to start off with the fact that literacy as a whole, literacy as a whole was not common to the Arabs, right? So if literacy rates were poor as a whole, then naturally you're going to find that the literacy rates for women would be less than men in that society. So there weren't many people that could read or write at the time. They were few, and those that could read and write ended up becoming scribes of the Prophet And from the women, that number would even be much less of people that could read and write at the time. But there's one particular woman who was known to have gathered the Qur'an, to have memorized the Qur'an and to have have been proficient in its memorization and its recitation. And her name is Umm Waraqa bint Abdullah ibn al-Harif. Umm Waraqa bint Abdullah ibn al-Harif radiallahu ta'ala anha. Now her story is that she was a very wealthy woman, a very noble woman uh, from Al-Khazraj in Medina. And she basically was the sought after woman at the time when Islam came to Al-Medina. And SubhanAllah, when she embraced the da'wah of Mus'ab ibn Umayr radiallahu ta'ala anhu before the coming of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa she had unique circumstances that allowed her to excel in immediately memorizing the Qur'an. For one, she was one of the few literate women that existed in al Madina, one of the few literate people, period, but she also was someone who was literate. The second thing is that she inherited a huge amount of wealth. So she wasn't someone that had to worry about her wealth or her day-to-day, and she wasn't someone that was involved in the politics of al Madina prior to the coming of al-Islam. So she wasn't involved in Bu'ath, she wasn't involved in any of the, the wars that took place. So she really had the opportunity to immediately dedicate herself exclusively to the Qur'an, exclusively to the da'wah of Mus'ab ibn Umair, which of course was the da'wah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now when the Prophet Sallallahu came to Medina, she was one of those who dedicated herself amongst Ummahat al Mu'mineen, amongst the mothers of the believers, and amongst some of the female scholars at the time, with particular proficiency in the recitation of the Quran. And there is something that surrounds her of a controversy of sorts, which is that the Prophet ﷺ told her to lead the people of her household in salah, in, in prayer. So when you have the controversy, and when I say controversy, it's not a controversy within the tradition, it's a controversy, obviously a a, a modern controversy, that those that try to suggest, that the people that try to suggest that uh, the Prophet had allowed for a woman to lead a mixed congregation of men and women, uh, men and women use the narration of Umm Waraqa radiallahu ta'ala anha that when she came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and she memorized the Qur'an and she was literate and she clearly became scholarly and distinguished pretty early on, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam commanded her to lead her home in salah. Okay? The problem is, is that there is no indication. It, it, it's such an ambiguous narration to use for something so extreme in terms of overturning the ijma' the consensus in that regard, to say that Umm Waraqa radiallahu anha's narration justifies that. The only thing we have is that the Prophet ﷺ commanded her to lead the folk in her home. That could have been children, that could have been servants, because again, she was a very wealthy woman at the time. It could have meant many things. It could have meant unique circumstances. But what we do know is that she was someone who was a distinguished reciter of the Qur'an, and she used to teach the women of Medina the Qur'an, and she used to recite the Qur'an amongst the most proficient of the reciters. Now, subhanAllah, the next several biographies we're going to cover, all of them have significant twists and turns. Okay, these stories are not all rosy in the sense that 
there's a lot of difficulty these people encountered. Um Waraqa came to the Prophet Sallallahu and asked the Prophet Sallallahu something very specific. And this is the spirit of the Ansar of the Prophet Sallallahu She came to the Prophet Sallallahu at the time of Badr, when the Battle of Badr is taking place. And she says to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Rasulullah, إِذْنْ لِي فِي الْغَزْوِ مَعَكْ O Messenger of Allah, let me go out in battle with you. Let me be a part of the battle with you. And she said, أُمَرِّدُ مَرْضَاكُمْ And even if it's just there to treat the sick amongst you, but I want to be there in the battlefield with you. Now when she says, I want to be there in the battlefield with you, she says something very specific. She says, لَعَلَّ اللَّهَ أَنْ يَرْزُقَنِي shahada." I want Allah to grant me shahada, martyrdom. The Ansar, the spirit of the Ansar, was wanting to be there with the Prophet in his most difficult moments. Remember the story of the man that came to the Prophet and said to the Prophet as he was going out in the battle, and the Prophet asked him, what are you here for? He said, to be struck with an arrow right here. I'm gonna be with you and I'm gonna be struck with an arrow right here. And the Prophet said, Ustuqillaha yasduq. Be truthful with Allah and Allah will be truthful with you. Right? So Um Waraqa says to the Prophet pretty explicitly, I want to be a martyr. I want to be out there and I want to be a martyr with you. The Prophet responds to her and says, Qarri fi baytik fa inna Allah ta'ala yarzukhuk shahada. Stay in your home and trust me that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to bestow upon you shahada. فَكَانَ تُسَمَّ الشَّهِيدَ The Prophet ﷺ told her that you are actually going to be a martyr, but not in the battlefield, but you will be a shahida. So she actually had the nickname in the time of the Prophet ﷺ, amongst the Prophet ﷺ and his companions as a shahida, as the martyr. So imagine walking amongst the companions and everyone knows you're going to be martyred. How? Allahu alam. But your nickname is a shahida. So she goes on and she kind of occupies this position as being the female teacher of the Qur'an, the, the greatest authority from the women of the Qur'an in Medina. Teaching the Qur'an, reciting the Qur'an, she's a hafidah of the Qur'an. There are students of the Qur'an going to her and reciting to her to be corrected. She also becomes famous for her siyam and for her qiyam, for her fasting and for her prayer at night. So she used to pray at night and people would go by her home and they could hear her recitation at night. Now all of this is very significant for uh, uh, the reason of how she eventually will pass away radiallahu ta'ala anha. So Umaraqa radiallahu ta'ala anha goes on and she maintains the status in the time of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. And she maintains the status in the time of Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And her home is a wealthy home and her home is a home of ilm, where people go and study with her. And she aged significantly. So she became a very old woman in the time of Umar al Khattab radiallahu anhu, which suggests that she was elderly when Islam came. So she's in her 60s or 70s in the time of Umar al Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu would do his night patrols, right? And Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he says in the morning one day, he says, Wallahi ma sami'tu qira'ata khalati um waraqa al bariha. He said, I didn't hear her qira'a last night. SubhanAllah, like that's how much you could depend upon walking by this woman's home and hearing her recitation of the Quran. That I didn't hear the qira'a of my aunt, and this was obviously an honorific title that he was giving to her last night. And the Prophet ﷺ used to visit her, a shahida, and people used to say, let's go visit a shahida um waraqa. Let's go visit the martyr um waraqa. So Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu went to check on her home. And essentially what had happened to um waraqa radiallahu ta'ala anha, this uh, scholar of the Qur'an, this teacher of the Qur'an, is that because she was so wealthy, she had a male and female servant that plotted against her and basically martyred her and took all of her wealth. So Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu went to her home and found that she had been killed by, a, by two servants who basically stole all of the wealth. 
And subhanAllah, obviously, as I said, there are twists and turns in this. This is the hafidha of the, the female companions of the Prophet SallAllahu Alaihi Wasallam. And she was murdered in her home, subhanAllah. And the Prophet SallAllahu Alaihi Wasallam told her she would be a shahida. And Umar radiAllahu ta'ala anhu, when he saw her in the state, he said, Sadaqa Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ahina kana yaqul in tariqu bina nazuru shahida. SubhanAllah. He said that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was truthful when he used to say, let's go visit the martyr. Let's go visit a shahida radiallahu ta'ala anha. So SubhanAllah, she's known as the hafidha, the hafidha of the female companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And she also, uh, you know, the, the, the circumstances under which her martyrdom took place, her shahada took place was very unique. Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu himself personally found the two that murdered her and they were uh, executed for murdering her radiallahu ta'ala anha. And so she had this reputation of being the martyred hafila, basically the, the shahida and hafila amongst the companions radiallahu ta'ala anha.